So Jasmine was the first Asian artist on MTV and she was nominated for Channel, a Channel V Award. She's also been featured in Time and Rolling Stone magazine and she was a Warner recording artist. So she has taken her skills and her success in the music industry so that now she can bring this book to families. And I think this evening she's also going to, to give us a, uh, a little song as well. So please welcome Jasmine Ferrucci. woman, but I sure like my space. <laughs> Who am I? This book is written specifically for children and their parents, but if you've ever been a kid, this book is for you too. Who am I? This is a core question that I grew up asking and never really entirely got a straight answer. It was almost like, go get the sugar. You know, um, or you, you haven't done your homework yet. It was just taken and moved on because it's a difficult question. I mean, parents have not been taught and their parents never taught their parents. And, and so we've only learned what we've learned through, you know, life and through organized religion. So I went out looking for a book for my kids and I couldn't find one. And I thought, okay, this is an opportunity to write one. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go through a series of statements, and I'm going to move over so you can have a look at the screen here. And, um, well, we're we still catching the light. Yes, we are. Good. And so all I'm asking you to do is to experience the statements in your body. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect with our breath. So we've heard all these amazing people talk earlier, all these amazing women, and they've all brought you back into your body. The breath is a very powerful tool. So I'm going to ask all of you right now, where are you in your breath? So stay with your breath. After you've connected with your breath, we're going to become aware of how the mind gets distracted. We leave our bodies. So we listen, and then suddenly we go into, oh my god, I wonder what my kid's doing right now. You know, I've got dinner. Come back into your body. OK? I recommend this book for every person to be to read it uh, every night because it's very easy for us to forget who we are. We forget. We go for a nice evening, we listen to people talk and we go back and we go right back into our old habits. They're old neural pathways that are built. And so let's start with our first visual. Gulnar, are you ready? Great. Okay. So I've already gone through this. So the first visual here we have, the earth is a living organism to which nothing can be added except the rays of the sun. Is that true? Is everybody good with that? I'm trying to see, make some eye contact. <laughs> you can say yes, or you can say no. You can say the meteors and, you know, asteroids that come onto this planet. And no, I don't believe that's true. I'm okay with that. You're allowed. Everybody good? Yeah. Good. Okay. We're going to wake you up a little bit here as well, okay? If you're sleeping, I'm going to stamp my foot and say, okay, get up. All right, good. So if nothing enters the planet except the rays of the sun, we only recycle what already exists. So we've shown, you know, a different, bunch of different little recycle situations here for the little ones. And well, it makes it simple. If you can't think, you can at least look. And so... Earth only recycles what already exists. So the next one gets a little complicated now. Well, our planet Earth is made up of four elements, fire, water, air, and earth. Does anybody here know where those exist in their bodies? Anybody? Well, our bones are made up of earth. Minerals, calcium, we carry them in our bones. Lungs hold the air. Our entire body is water. We're 75% water. And we hold fire in our gut, 
the acids, the body temperature. So we have the four elements inside of us, so what's outside is inside. And so we have this fifth element called space. You and everything around you is kept together by these five elements. So what is this fifth element called space? Is it up there? Great. So space is not nothing. Space is energy that cannot be seen by the human eye. It is the glue that connects everything together. It cannot be weighed and it cannot be measured. We know there is gravity. We cannot see gravity, but we can feel it because it keeps us bound to this planet. Is everybody okay with that so far? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, great, so next. The entire body, your skin, your organs, your nails, your hair, it recycles back into the planet. It takes approximately seven years, they say, for your entire body, all your organs, to completely go through uh, regenerating new cells. And so there's a little bit of you in everything, and a little bit of everything in you. That includes grandpa, as Kelly talked about. That includes the people we hold judgment for. That includes the bully on the playground. You are physically recycling with everybody. So when you show your love and take care of the planet, you are loving and taking care of yourself. And everything on the planet loves and takes care of you. Nothing is separate. We are all connected. We are all one. Our planet exists amongst other planets, stars, and solar systems as part of the whole universe. Without the rays of the sun warming us, we would not exist. The entire universe exists with everything and depends on everything within it. Hence, we are one with the universe. We are infinite and limitless. What does it mean to be infinite and limitless? It means to have no beginning and no end, to be everything and nothing, to be all powerful and immeasurable. So who am I? I am an infinite limitless being living in a limited body. I am never separate. I'm never alone, I am connected, and I am safe. We have done the visual such that when children at night, especially before they go from conscious mind into subconscious mind, and it works for adults as well, because we are all sitting with those cell phones and we're busy and we're cramming stuff and we're mad, we get a chance to remember this part, because it's so simple and it's still something we just can't hold on to because the mind invariably does not want to hold on to that. And we're gonna to touch that in just a second, so let's go to our question answers. So we've got question answers for me and my family. So what's great about this is, you know, if you've got a young child, you can read this with them and you can create a conversation around the day. So what is the difference between my limited self and my unlimited self? Well, my limited self is my body, and it includes my mind, which creates my thoughts. My limited self is always evaluating the present moment through the past and the future. My limited self feels fear. So anything that's coming from a fear-based thought or a fear-based belief system, any action, anything you're doing, when you're eating, as Sherry was saying, and you're angry and you're holding on to something, your, your food's not gonna work in your body. Okay, when you're doing anything with a negative intention, it's not gonna work. So what is the unlimited self? The unlimited self only lives in the present moment. It does not live in the past or the future. The unlimited self does not think and judge. 
It accepts what is and treats every opportunity as an opportunity to grow and to learn. So everything is happening to you for a reason. And then we come on to a question next that children always ask. What happens to us when we die? Now, we have different religious beliefs, we have different you know, concepts on what we do when, after we die. Well, I've kept it pretty simple because it can be pretty frightening for young children. You know, um, and that's because the limited self, the one that feels the fear, knows that it eventually has to go. But it's not good with it. The mind doesn't want to die. So that is why there's this existential fear and anxiety and all these other disorders that we see is because we are in resistance with really what is. So everything around you has energy. The body is the physical shell that holds the energy. The body you are in has been chosen for this life. When you die, your energy still lives. It goes back into the energy of the universe. Your physical body returns back into the planet. Is everybody good with that? Yeah? yeah? It's simple. It's fact-based. We've lived with story for a long time. We have lots of stories out there. We've only lived with stories and poetry. This is keeping it simple. We're living at a time where science is, you know, has progressed. And so this makes complete sense. You don't die. Your energy is always out there. Can I still connect with grandpa and grandma, even though they're not here? Absolutely, you can. You just close your eyes, you put your hand on your chest, and you think about them, and their energy will connect with you. You will find those answers, as Kelly said, in your belly. Well, when we talk about being alone and wanting to connect and not wanting to connect, these become two very core questions. Well, I'm not going to have a lot of time to go through them, unfortunately, with you. You're just going to have to get the bulk. <laughs> so the last part of it is, is actually a breathing exercise, and I'm not going to be able to, unfortunately, in a journaling exercise, I'm not going to be able to run through it with you, but I can assure you that doing it daily is going to create a new neural pathway in your head. And if anything that you believed to be true that was causing you pain, stress, grief, you will eventually be able to jump out of it because you'll suddenly see it. So there's an exercise that teaches you to let it go through the breath. Well, I'm going to end tonight by singing this again. I believe in new beginnings. I believe in happy endings, love and hope and I enjoy a sweet distraction a funny face a new attraction a change that's all sometimes my sunny skies are blue but then it's really up to you to turn the light on cause it's a good life so live it like it's the last Travel to a million places with crowded streets and endless faces. Boy, there's no end. And all I seek is true salvation to understand this great creation and make amends. Sometimes the nights they seem too long, and I feel my heart can't carry on for the sun. the last night of your life. Ah, 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 yes, it's a good life. So live it 
attraction, a funny face, new attraction, a change.